99% of data analytics projects that I see online are either boring or are not connected to a real business case scenario or are just not strong enough to make someone really stand out in today's job market. And if this is something that you have also seen for yourself, well, in this video, I want to tell you exactly the strategy that I would use today to create a super, super strong portfolio projects in data analytics or data science that is definitely going to increase your chances to land interviews in the first place and also potentially job offers. And so if any of this sounds interesting, make sure to stick with me in this video because I'm going to show you exactly what is the problem of 99% of data projects that I see out there. I'm going to show you some completely free resources that you can use today to create very, very strong portfolio projects. And I will also give you a very practical idea on how to work on these projects with a bit of a framework and logic that you can follow along as well to uh, put these projects into completion. And so let's start with the main problem. So most people out there to uh, actually start working on a data analytics or data science project will uh, try to find a data set online. So uh, you might have heard of Kaggle, that's an amazing resource for uh, finding data sets online. But the problem with Kaggle is that in most of the cases, you will download a static data set. So something that is already kind of uh, pre-made for you that you can open in a CSV file or in Excel or even using Python uh, to then start your analysis. But the setup of this problem is already problematic because most companies will not work with static data sets. Most companies will work with the dynamic data sets that can change every single day, that can have a very weird formatting, maybe even coming from different data sources. And so for all of these reasons, already starting by a static data set for your data portfolio is a massive, massive mistake, or at least something that, you know, is not going to make you stand out and is not going to necessarily show you have the capability to handle dynamic data sets like in a real workplace. And so the actual new approach and strategy that I would use if I were you uh, and, you know, uh, if I were here looking for a way to create a super standout uh, portfolio project is actually creating a setup for my project that is based on APIs. So just so that we are on the same page, what is an API? So API stands for Application Programming Interface. You can think of it as a rule book that lets two pieces of software talk to each other. And basically you can think in this way, you have a menu that lists what you can ask a service to do. So for example, get today's weather or create a new user. Then you have a translator that it fixes the format of the request and the response. So both sides understand the data. And then you have a contract. And so it promises if you send this kind of request, you will get this kind of result. A quick example can be a weather app that calls a weather API to fetch temperature and forecast. And for example, the sign in with Google, which uses the Google's API to confirm who you are. But the main point for us is that by using API, we can actually fetch some data, which is available online. And this data is actually live and it constantly updated, which makes it way more realistic and close to a real business world scenario rather than working on a Kaggle data set that is static and is not really creating any challenge for your data task. And so my main point here is that by using this kind of setup that I'm going to show you in just a second, you will immediately stand out among the vast majority of candidates that are only using simple data set that they find online. Okay, so the interesting resource that I found online that I think is super, super valuable is actually this GitHub uh, repository that you see now in my screen. It has been created by uh, Marcel Scruz and it basically is a list of public APIs. And so let me show you in just a second why I think this resource is really, really amazing. So this is basically a collection of so many uh, open APIs that uh, you can use to uh, fetch and gather data that is publicly available online. And this uh, repository is uh, amazing because they have divided uh, these APIs and data into uh, so many different categories. So you have animals, uh, you have anime, you have art and design, you have cryptocurrencies, uh, email entertainment, finance as well. So uh, even stuff for machine learning. So, so many different uh, categories. And so if I select maybe a category that might be interesting for a business related scenario, so let's, for example, search search for finance, you see here a table with a list of API providers that we can use for our project. And so the uh, what you see here in the table is the uh, type of API, the provider. You have obviously the description telling you what this API does. And then also you have uh, these three columns, auth, HTTPS, and course. And so in case you're interested, the auth tells you if the API requires authentication to use. And so if it says, for example, API key, it means that you need to sign up and get uh, a key to include in your request. 
If it says no, you can use it without any authentication. HTTPS shows whether the API supports secure connection. And so yes means that it uses HTTPS, which is uh, encrypted and so safer. And no means it only works over the plain uh, HTTP. And course is the short for cross-origin resource sharing. And it's about whether you can call the API directly from a web browser running a JavaScript. So yes means it supports cross-origin request. So you can call it from a fronted app uh, in the browser. No means you cannot do that directly. You will need a server as a middle step. So that's just for you on how to read this table. And so let's try to open one of these that is available. So I think I'm going to go into sportiveness. And uh, if I scroll down, uh, for example, I open the Strava one. And so uh, you can see some documentation here. So it says Strava athletes upload millions of activities every single day. Our open API and this rich data set yield diverse opportunities for developers from creating new hardware to augmenting the Strava experience. So that's obviously just an example. And the way that you would set up your project uh, is obviously, again, part of the project itself. So you basically have to understand, okay, what kind of data you can get from uh, this sort of application. And so uh, you have different sort of uh, documents here. So for example, I can open the API documentation here. And uh, in uh, this Strava API version 3, I would see basically what I would need to do in order to get some data out of this API. And so obviously you have different coding languages that you can use. So for example, probably in uh, data analytics and data science, you would use Python. And without going to much detail, this is an example on how the Strava API is uh, created. So you have different uh, libraries that obviously you have to import in your Python environment. You have to configure the auth access exactly in the way that uh, we uh, just seen in the table. And then it says create an instance of the API class. And then basically you're going to try to get a response for uh, depending on the uh, setup that you uh, have in your in your Python code, and uh, it also shows what is a sample response. So you can immediately, you know, even before starting working on a project, you can immediately see, okay, this is pretty much what I can get from uh, this API. And so you can see, okay, uh, maybe this is good for my project or not, and deciding uh, if this is a good API to use for for yourself. Now the stuff that I also wanted to show you is actually this uh, contributing file in the GitHub repository, uh, just because I want to give you an idea of the uh, uh, preciousness of this resource in my perspective. And so here it says this API list is not a marketing tool, but a tool to help the community build applications and use free public APIs quickly and easily. And so basically the uh, creators of this repository, they want to make sure that the API has full free access or at least a free tier and does not depend on the purchase of a device service before submitting. And so to me, this is super precious because it basically says, okay, everything here is going to be based on some free API data that we can get from, uh, you know, all of this uh, list of resources that we have in here. And so this exactly makes this uh, thing so interesting because it's a collection of only uh, free uh, data and free providers. And so you make sure that you work with uh, real data. You make sure that you have to understand some sort of a setup and uh, data collection that is, again, a common task in data analytics and data science. Science. And also, you know, you have to set up a bit of a Python code, for example, to gather data, see how the data comes up and basically, you know, debug and troubleshoot if you have any errors. Obviously, the link to the GitHub repository will be in the video description. But also in the video description, I going to link a document that I created for you that is basically trying to uh, summarize and give you some ideas on projects that you can start building yourself using these APIs. And so the way to use it is, for example, the first one that I'm trying to explain here is the financial modeling prep. So you can just copy uh, this part here go into the uh, repository and do like a control F and then this exactly financial modeling prep. So this is the API that I'm referring to. And basically what I'm trying to do here is uh, giving you a um, model or framework to follow for uh, your project uh, using the staff framework that is uh, super highly recommended by uh, recruiters. And so for example, using the financial uh, modeling prep, what I'm saying um, is that this is a free API that provides real time uh, and historical stock data. And so you can potentially analyze the stock price data from the API and correlate it with the data of earning reports to identify patterns. And so what I'm doing here is I give you the situation. So a financial news publication wants to create a new content section featuring uh, data driven articles on the market reactions to company news. And so you've been tasked with uh, developing a proof of concept project that demonstrate how to analyze the 
relationship uh, for a major tech company. And so the task is to identify the impact of quarterly earnings reports on the stock price of a publicly traded tech company like Apple and Amazon. And the goal is to show a quantifiable relationship between the event and market performance. And so I'm also giving you here a bit of a, a framework to follow. So uh, you have data collection, so use the financial modeling prep API. So you need to set up the API and collect this kind of data. Event identification, so you have to find the exact dates of the company past for uh, quarterly earnings. You have to do data analysis, so merge the stock data with the earning report dates, and then analyze the stock performance in the days leading up to and following each report, and calculate matches like the percentage change in stock price over a specific window, for example, three days before or uh, three days after the event to measure the market reaction. And obviously, you can uh, also create a visualization, so create charts to visualize your uh, findings. The other example that I have here is actually using Strava. So uh, this is kind of uh, using fitness data. So, so for example, what you can do is uh, analyzing public Strava data for a major um, metropolitan area to identify the most popular cycling and running routes. And then the goal is to provide data-driven recommendation to a city's transportation department on where to prioritize new bikes, lanes, or pedestrian paths. Super interesting. And so the action could be, again, using Strava API to uh, collect the data and then using also geospatial analysis. So you can use like a Python library to uh, plot the activity routes on a map. You can identify trends and also give the final recommendation. And then you can scroll down on this document. I included, for example, the Open Brewery uh, DB API. So provides data on uh, breweries um, and uh, craft beer bottle shops. So that could be an uh, interesting one in case you are uh, more towards like the uh, consumer goods type of market. OpenSea API, so these uh, give access to the largest NFT marketplace. And so if you consider NFT as an interesting potential future development, uh, then you can kind of understand how the sales of these NFT works. I also included the news API. So uh, for example, you can track news articles related to a specific product launch and analyze their sentiment over the first week uh, to basically see the public perception. So for example, I'm thinking about the launch of the new uh, iPhones and like Apple products, uh, lately and so that could be also an interesting one to um, work on but as i said uh, if you go back to uh, this repository here you will see an uh, incredible amount of resources that you can use uh, different topics um, different domains of expertise and so i really encourage you to check out this resource just because i found it uh, online uh, lately and to me, actually, this should be your go-to place instead of relying on uh, Kaggle because of the reasons that I explained before. And there you have it, a simple video on a very interesting setup for any data analytics or data science project that you can use today to really create something that stand out, especially because today job market is pretty tough. And so you want to make sure that your project is not a kind of an average in the market. You really want to try to do something different, something original and something really, really close to a real business scenario. And so if you're interested, make sure to check all the completely free resources that uh, you will see in the video description. And if you found at least one useful information, make sure to uh, like and subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. I will also leave here in the screen some other very practical tutorials that I made with tools like SQL or Python or Tableau. So make sure to check them out if you are learning data analytics. And if you need help getting a job in data analytics and you want me to support you all the way until you land that job offer, make sure to check also my analytics and automation academy. Again, link in the video description. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.